Hey, what's happening, guys? Hope you all had a good weekend. I know that I did. And today we're going to start uh, a couple things where we're going to talk about a couple different ways to analyze circuits. Uh, this is the first one. We're going to do a nodal voltage analysis. And there's nothing too complicated here. This is what I used to teach the first year freshmen. Nodal voltage analysis, it finds the unknown voltage drops around a circuit between the different nodes. And these black dots are the nodes. So it's pretty simple. It complements what's also known as a mesh analysis, and we'll talk about that in another video. And they're basically both what are called matrix analysis. A nodal analysis uses the nodal equations of Kirchhoff's first law to find the voltage potential. So you do need to know Kirchhoff's first law, which says the currents entering a node are exactly equal in value to the currents leaving a node. Okay? Once we have that little bit of information there, we know that we can add together the nodal voltages and the net result will be zero. So if there are n number of nodes in the circuit, there will be n minus 1 independent nodal equations, and these alone are all we need. Okay? So let's talk about this circuit that I've drawn up here. We have three resistors, a 10 ohm, 20 ohm, and a 40 ohm. And we have our currents, I1, I2, and I3. So our first step in the mesh, or not the mesh analysis, the nodal analysis, is to determine the directions of our current. Since I drew the current in purple, I will color it in purple. So here is our 10 volt power source. This is the positive, so we know the current is coming here. Then over here we have our 20 volt power source. And the current is also flowing in that direction. This is negative. We know current flows towards the negative. So we know that direction. So now that we know all of the directions, we can carry on with our analysis. So step two is to choose a reference node. Like I said, all the other nodes revolve around our reference node. And in this case, our reference node is going to be here at node D. Now, once we have that, the other three nodes are assumed to have voltages VA, VB, and VC with respect to D. So what we can say is VA minus VB over 10. Okay? VA minus VB over 10. That's that node. Plus VC minus VB over 20 equals VB over 40. See where we get that? These are our three nodes, VA minus VB, VB minus VC, and then we just have VB alone. VB is 40. So, once we know that, we can say VA equals 10 and VC equals 20, right? VA equals 10, VB equals 20. Now we can find, I'm sorry, VC equals 20. Now we can find VB. So we just carry on knowing that the currents in and currents out must be equal, we say 1 minus VB over 10 plus 1 minus VB over 20 equals VB over 40. Everything comes out the same. 2 equals VB, 1 over 40, plus 1 over 20, 
plus 1 over 10. Simple, right? Sweating. It's so humid here, I had to stop and mop my forehead. All right, so now we can say that VB equals 80 over 7 times V. Therefore, the current at 3 is equal to 2 over 7 or 0.286 amps, 286 milliamps. Y'all following? Now, generally, we want to use a nodal voltage analysis when there are a large number of current sources around so that we can define the network as something like I equals Y times V, and then we just add up our nodal voltages. But I hope that gives you a little bit of an understanding on nodal circuit analysis. We'll do our mesh analysis next, basically the same circuit, and we'll see how it goes. I hope you guys understand. If you have questions, feel free to ask them. But uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. There's a train coming, so I'm out. Peace.